I couldn't be more excited because in my hands is the Sisters of Battle Adeptosaurus Army Box. And we're gonna do an unboxing right now. I'm here with Dakota. Dakota, what would the words you use to describe this? Uh, it's a big ass box. It's a big ass box. It's a big ass box. For those of you that managed to get this on pre-order, I heard it sold out within 27 minutes. I believe it. I really believe it. It's crazy. So I'm really excited. I'm gonna be opening this for you. Um, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. If you want to wait until you get your copy of this, do not watch this video. All right. So uh, on the back, we've got this beautiful uh, image showing everything that's inside the box. I often feel they used to do this in second edition. They don't really do it anymore. Not really. They don't really show you everything. And I, I kind of like that. Um, so apparently you get 112 page Codex Adeptus Sororitas. I like that it's how many pages, like that's important. Um, <laughs> 80 Sororitas date cards. Where are the date cards in 40k? I want them for everything. I agree. They, they should be, we should just have data, like, cheat sheets. It'd be so nice. The best. People pay for it all the time, I think. 12 they Miracle do. Dice, which I know all about. We're going to be talking about that. Yes. An Adeptus Sororitas transfer sheet. And 25 Citadel miniatures, including a Canoness, 10 Battle Sisters, 5 Seraphim, 1 Repentia Superior, 4 Repentia, 3 Arco Flagellants, 1 Penitent Engine, and a Partridge in a Pear Tree. So, there isn't actually a Partridge. Okay. It's not Christmas yet. So I'm going to open up the box. I removed the cellophane earlier. Cheater. I know, I know. How dare you? Still smells good. I mean, no, you still get the unboxing smell, which is easily one of the best parts. Ready for this? So it slides out just like this. Shh. Thank you, sir. All right, I'm gonna turn this around just so everyone can see how it's presented. Wow, there it is. This is absolutely everything. So let's look and see what we've got here. It's nicely packed. We have bases that are actually put in their own little thing rather than just hanging out at the bottom of the box. It's got this little inner tray, which you don't really get in anything except for their regular box game. Yeah, so get that in Dark Imperium. Um, we've got these cards here. We've got the book. Um, and I'm gonna save the book to last. For all the guys that wanna know the rules, I'm gonna go through them, but I'm gonna go through it last, so. Let's have a look at what this cool stuff we've got. So we have a book here. Do you want to hold that? Yep. Keep that safe. We have the new Adeptosaurus novel that's out called Mark of Faith, available now. And you can scan to read the sample chapter. Look at that. Hmm. I wonder if that would scan over there. <laughs> somebody's, so, somebody, somebody let me know. Let me know if that works. Uh, there's core cool rules. Somebody's going to steal Someone's going to try like... Oh. Yeah. Uh, core cool rules, obviously, no real change there. Um, then we've got the how to put stuff together thing, which you expect. Transfer sheet, it's cool. We've got... Oh, what? Why do they do this? It's like, what? What is? This just feels like a waste of paper. Why? why? Do I, I don't know why. It's not big enough to like hang up, really. I don't know. And That's then we have plastic miniatures. So many. So, this looks like the Canoness. I Gotta think it's the Canoness. It's it's a single person. Got to be the Canoness. It's just one option though. It's not like because they mentioned that you can do multiple versions. This is just one by the looks of it. So interesting, interesting. to know. Interesting. So I suspect there'll be the one with multiple parts coming out later. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that. We've got um, this sprue. So these are almost like the um, the pre-mates. Like they're not modular, like the ones that we're expecting to come out. So they're like Dark Imperium space. Or lanes. Shadow Spear. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's, so it's a set thing when you build it. Yeah, they they're gonna look like this. We've got Arco Flagellants and the uh, Adeptosaurus and Seraphim on the same sprue here, and we have one, two of these in this sprue, um, and then we've got this other one which is the penitent engine, the plastic penitent engine, which That's is good. cool. That's really great. Um, and then the rest of the, uh, the, oh, the um, uh, what are they called? The Repentias are on here as well. Um, who's this guy? What's this all about? This melted dude. Is that the penitent engine? It's gotta be. It's gotta be the penitent engine. It's like a melted person. Of it, yeah, he's some kind. It's a bit frumpy. So yeah, so that's what we're looking at here. So it's essentially four plastic sprues. Not a lot, but that's all you need. So we have those. I mean, they're also tightly packed sprues. Yeah, yeah. Like, they are, like, optimized yeah, with is... as many dudes on a single sprue as possible. Yeah, it's true. That's their new machine, you know? They've got that. They're, they oh, have AI that calculates it now. That's uh, that's part of what they did. Well, there you go. Yeah. So then we have here, I'm guessing these are uh, date cards set one and two. That's what that says in the back there. So there's the date cards. And then we have 12 miracle dice, which do not have an emblem on them, which I thought they want. So essentially, basic be... white D6 is our miracle dice. It's a miracle that there's no logo on those. So there we go. A bit, a bit disappointing, but that's okay. Um, Should so we open up the cards? Let's see what we've got here. Everyone just wants, wants to see the rules in the rule book. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm excited for as well. But let's uh, let's look up the data cards and see what we've got here. We should do this. We're in the Knights of the Game Table studio right now. I'm gonna have to tidy that up afterwards because I have to do the cleaning. <laughs> um, so, like to pretend that somebody else does it, but it's me. All right, so what have we got here? We've got Sacred Rites. Um, we've got our oh, stratagems, lots of stratagems. We're gonna go through these wow, in the book. Yeah. 
Lots of stratagems. <whistles> Lots of stratagems. Wow, there's a ton of stratagems in this. So sacred rites must be like their um, uh, chaplain, I'm guessing. That's gotta be my, my guess on that. Yeah. It's gotta be, gotta be that. And then, so that's one set of data cards. Hmm. And then the other set of data cards, see what we've got here. Tactical objectives, tactical objectives, and tactical objectives. Ah, oh, it's not the data cards I wanted it to be. Mm. It's just the regular data cards. Oh, I want the the, the freaking the, rules is what yeah. I want. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. There's a train going by, it's really loud, so we're gonna pause it just for a second and then pick it back up in a second. So, so one of the things that we've really noticed about this, and we were just mentioning this earlier on, is this is the first army box that we've seen that comes with the codex. Yeah, I've that's unheard of. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've like with Shadow Screen, you kinda got a little thing with like some additional rules so just micro to... codexes. Yeah, but that's that's just a micro code. It didn't come with like strats. I mean, like mm -hmm. the last one, Shakespeare had like some warlord traits. It had some stuff in there, but it was really just to make sure you could use use the miniatures that were brand new that just came out. This is a it's a full codex. It is. This it's, is and it, it's the collector's codex. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's so it's it's the real deal. I'd like him to do this. I wish they'd do this. A couple of weeks before it comes out, bring out this. Yeah, like that would be yeah, like a, an awesome box set that comes with the decks. So uh, let let's talk about the Adeptus the Soror mm -hmm. Sororitas. It's a very hard word for me to say. Adeptus Sororitas. So, um, so going through it, obviously you've got all the fluff that you expect. It's got the stories. It's got um, the 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 way it works out. It's pretty cool because it's from the emperor down <laughs> as it goes in. So that's pretty that's, cool. That's, that's a nice little chart. I like that. Um, and then uh, you got Warger of the Sisters. The um, the helmet is called a sabbat. There we go. The sabbat pattern. Sorota's helmet. That's that one. There we go. We know oh. that. I didn't know that. Really Purity seals. What they're for. The Order of Our Martyred Lady, then we've got the Order of the Valerius Heart. Oh, that's pretty pretty. It's some good artwork there. I mean, this is like what you expect. I know what you guys want. You guys want the rules, so you know we'll start they want speeding, the speeding towards the good stuff. It explains all the different orders. There's the six orders that we know, right? We knew about these before. Um no, these are minor orders. Yeah, these are so not... these are order minoris. So I suppose they're showing alternate versions. These ones shave their head, that's pretty cool. This one looks like freaking uh, corn. Well, look at that. That's a sister of world eaters. Sisters of world eaters. Pretty, pretty sure that's what that is. Um, then we've got the non-militant uh, orders. Uh, we're seeing the uh, maledictum. And we've got like, the whole map of the, the universe once again, or galaxy, I suppose. Um, and then we've got a uh, history of time. I like those, they're really fun. And then it looks like we're dealing with some art. Uh, what are we, what is this? Is this, is this Alpha Legion? Zinch or Alpha Legion? That's, That's Alpha Legion. Yeah, it's Alpha Legion versus the Epsosaurus. Mm hmm. Yeah. And look, there's a. Yep, Alpha Legion. There we go. Love that. All right, so we keep going. It's a bit about Celestine, about the Repentia. I mean, there's a lot here. Yeah, all, all, like, everyone's like, get to the rules. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, these look beautiful. The artwork in here is stunning. Let's have a look at the pictures and see if we can see like any new models coming. So we've definitely got the, the, the multi-version Canoness. We're seeing uh, the unique battle sister that, that came out before. Um, what else is here that we potentially haven't seen? The Diologus, Imagi Imagifier, Hospitaller. We knew about those. And then we've got the Canoness Superior, Junif Erita, the special character. Yeah, one. she's gonna come on the floaty thing. She's on a floaty thing, <laughs> that's the official name of it. Um, and then we have, uh, the flamers are unique, they're different. I don't know if you guys have seen that already, but the new flamers are pretty cool. You see they've got that weird front. Oh, hey. Totally different. The storm bolters look, I like these, they look almost more true scale, you know? Yeah, they're, I felt that. Their portions don't look quite as. Ah, uh, they've got the Viridian miniature. She's cool, I love Canoness Viridian. She's awesome. Sisters Repentia, we've seen those. Um, everything here looks the same. I'm like looking in the artwork, see if there's anything new. The new Exorcist and the new Immolator. Those look rad. They look really cool. Um, they're really great. And then of course we've got the Penson engine. The Preacher, is that a new Preacher? Or is that a very old Preacher? That's, he's a bit old. Looks very old, yeah. They, old they've preacher. got that missionary that we know before. The Death God Assassin Crusader, nothing's changed there. So everything looks about the same. They've got an example army. All right, so here we are, the army of the Ecclesiarchy. Let's talk about it. Um, so first of all, all members of the Adept sources belong to an order. Some dates sheets specify which unit from. For example, Junith Erita is from the Order of Amartyr Lady. Um, if it has a keyword, you can nominate it. This is all pretty standard. Um, nothing too exceptional here. If you decide she's from the Order of the Holy Rose, that becomes there. Right, no change. Abilities, acts of faith. If your army contains at least one unit with this ability, you can perform one act of faith in each phase. To do so, you use a miracle dice. 
Gain Miracle Dice. You gain one Miracle Dice at the beginning of each battle round, and you gain one at the end of a phase if one or more of the following conditions are met. One or more times. So you don't get one you can't, per thing. Yeah. Yeah, so the most you can get is two, basically. You get one if a unit from your army with the act of faith ability destroys an enemy unit. One if a character from your army with the act of faith ability is destroyed. One if uh, a psychic power is resisted by a unit of your army using acts of faith without performing an act of faith to do so. Um, and Valor, which is uh, if you roll an unmodified one from a morale test for a unit with an act of faith. Hmm. Um, when you gain a miracle dice, roll a d6 and put it in your miracle pool. Um, and that's your miracle pool. And then before making a dice roll for a model or a unit from your army with acts of faith, you can choose one or more of the dice from miracle pool instead. Um, and for each individual dice that is being rolled as part of the dice roll, you can select the miracle dice to use it instead. This is essentially the same kind of rule that we see in Blackstone Fortress. Um, in uh, uh, AOS. Each, AOS has it. It's essentially you trigger it, you roll the dice, you put it to a pool. It will be like the number five. And then whenever you need a number five really badly because you want your excess to fire five times, you say, I'm going to use this. Mm. The That's quote, so powerful. It's really powerful. Um, so the question is, how many miracle dice can you use per phase? I don't Doesn't think there's, say. there's not there's a hard no limit. limit. Yeah. There's no right now. Limit. There's no limit. Let's wait right for now, FAQ. Yeah, FAQ yeah. might change that, but right now, yeah, it's if you got the you know got the money, they got the time. Yeah. Instead, the value of chosen miracle dice is used so you substitute it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, for each individual die that is being rolled as part of a die roll, you can select one miracle die from your miracle dice roll to substitute in place of that dice. That's pretty good. You can use them to advance, charge, deny the witch, hit, wound, save, damage, or a morale test. For example, instead of rolling a d6 to see what value is added to a unit's move characteristic, you can just use the dice from the miracle dice pool. If the value of the dice was 5, you would add 5 to the move characteristic. It's before making a dice roll. So you yeah, can't so you can't... Roll. Roll it out and then be like, oh, that sucked, I'll change it. Yeah. Um, but you still got CP rerolls. Right? A miracle dice is not a modifier or an inherently modified dice. So, for example, if you use a miracle dice with a value of one from morale test, it is considered to be an unmodified roll of one. Which could worth I actually count. Yes, I Except can. for Valor. You're not allowed to use it for the morale test. So, well, when rerolling a dice roll, no new miracle dice may be substituted. So, you can't use it for a reroll. Good to know. All right. Okay. And then Sacred Rites. If every unit of your army has Adeptus Sororitas and or Adeptus Ministorum, you gain an ability depending on which Sacred Rite is active for your army. So we have, oh, this is interesting. Determine which Sacred Rite is active for all units from your army with the ability at the start of the battle. To do so, after deployment, before the first battle round begins, select one Sacred Rite from the following table to be active. Or you can roll two dice to generate two randomly. Oh, so that's kind of like the thing uh, Chaos Knights get where you get like the, on the like the renegade table like yeah. where you can like roll up or pick yeah exactly one. imperial yeah. knights have it too right yeah. so you can have hand of the emperor when a unit with this sacred right advances add one to advance or add one uh, and add one when you charge okay. spirit of the martyr uh, when a model with this sacred right is destroyed roll a d6 for removing the model on five up they can either shoot if it was shoot phase or attack with one of its melee weapons if it was the fight phase um okay that's actually kind it's of not sweet. terrible it's like having an ancient all the time yeah Aegis of the Emperor, when a Deny the Witch test is taken, add three to the total. That's pretty huge. That can really stump some opponents. Like, if somebody's yeah. playing Zeech anything, then... That's uh, really <laughs> strong. Because they roll 1d6 for their Deny tests. Mm -hmm. So that means you're a minimum of four, maximum of nine. Four to nine. So you're averaging seven, give or take. Or six. Six or seven. Six not, or seven. Not so bad. Not amazing, but not so bad. Uh, divine Guidance, when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model with this Sacred Rite, on an unmodified wound roll of 6, the AP improves by 1, okay? The Passion, when resolving an attack made with a melee weapon, an unmodified roll of 6 is an additional hit. Um, and then lastly, like the Emperor, a morale test, you can re-roll the dice. So let's see, what, what would you take if you were going to take one? I kind of like Spirit of Martyr, and I kind of like the Night the Witch. Yeah, the, the Night the Witch one seems nice. I mean, if I knew I was playing against, like, um... Thousand Suns, it, and I had to pick one, it seems like that's kind of a no-brainer because that can stop a couple smites and that's going to get value over time. Um, though to be, I mean, being able to um, move a little bit faster is pretty nice too, but honestly, seeing as you get to roll two, none of them, generally speaking, strike me as so crazy strong to where it's like, I'm going to pick this every time. Yeah, but Spirit of the Monster is probably up there. An extra shot. Can you imagine if somebody shoots your heavy weapon squad? That's true. And on fire, the, they fire. That's if I guess if I had to pick one that I for the most general use, I would go spirit martyr. Yeah, that's yeah. probably the way people are gonna go. Okay, then we have the canoness, um, who has acts of faith. Oh no, sorry. There's also shield of faith. Six up and vulnerable save, probably army wide, 
and the unit can attempt to resist the psychic power by rolling one dice instead of two. Um, cool. So the Cannoness, um, she's got a Condemner Bolt Gun, uh, which is good against Psychers, or she can take it, she doesn't come in as standard. She has a Falcon Vulnerable save. She has Brazier of Holy Fire. If any models in your army have Brazier of Holy Fire within six inches of demon units, subtract one from the leadership of those enemy units. In addition, once per battle, when this model fires Overwatch or is chosen to shoot with, it can unleash the Brazier's Holy Flames. Pick a unit within 12 inches. Um, if firing Overwatch, you have to pick the unit that's declared a charge against you. That's pretty cleverly worded that. Roll a dice on a two up, the enemy takes D3 mortal wounds. Demons take D6 mortal wounds. <laughs> well, that's not terrible. Um, okay, it, this is instead of um, taking something else. So, oh. so it doesn't come with it as standard, but it says if the model is equipped with one chainsword, it can have a brazier of holy fire or a null rod. It comes with a chainsword. So it's interesting the way that's worded. Yeah. The model can be equipped with one of the following instead of a chainsword, a power sword or a blessed blade. If it's equipped with one chainsword, it can have a brazier of holy fire. It's really weirdly worded. That is a strange way to put it. It can be equipped with a bolt gun and a power sword instead of a bolt pistol and chainsword. Okay, so basically, if you don't give it a different melee weapon, you're allowed the Brazier of Holy Fire. Okay. That's, that's how it's worded. Okay. Right. Um, Reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by friendly order units within six inches. Um, if you give them the Rod of Office, add three inches to the range of its lead the Righteous ability. So it's nine inches if you give it the Rod of Office. Hmm. Um, okay. If this model is equipped with the bolt gun and the power sword, it has the rod of office. So you either have a bolt gun and a power sword and a rod of office, or you have a chain sword and something, and the brazier of holy fire or the null rod. The null rod can't be targeted by psychic powers, and any army that have null rods within 18 inches of enemy psychers trap one from psychic tests and neither witch tests. That's spicy. All right, so you can basically be anti psyker do mortal wounds, or it'd be better at letting people reroll. That's pretty. There's a lot of variety there. It's worded a bit complicated. Yeah, but, it's a bit strange, but... But there we go. It makes, it's pretty good. Celestine. Um, pretty much the same. Strength 3, toughness 3. The sword is strength 5 in shooting, or strength 7 in close combat. AP minus 3, 2 damage. Automatically hits with the, the flames. This all looks pretty standard to me. Uh, healing tears. At the start of your movement phase, pick a friendly Gemini Superior unit within 3 inches. If there's a model that's lost any wounds, they would gain lost wounds. Otherwise, if a unit has been destroyed, you can turn to the... If a model from the unit is destroyed, you can turn to the battlefield with two wounds remaining. Um, it, if it can't be placed, it's not destroyed. That's pretty standard. Four up and vulnerable save. Saintly blessings. Invulnerable save of Cerritus infantry models from Shield of Faith goes up by one within six inches, or two if it's Gemini superior, to a maximum of four plus. <clears throat> and all Adeptus Ministorum and Estra Militarum have six up and vulnerable save within six inches. First time it's destroyed, roll a dice on a two up, it comes back to life with all wounds remaining. Yep. It's pretty standard Celestine there, nothing too. Nothing, no big weird. changes. Then we've got this Triumph of St. Catherine. I don't know what this is. What is? There's no picture for it. There's no picture of it whatsoever. But I have a theory, but I don't know what my theory is. Yep. So it says the Triumph of St. Catherine is a single model equipped with six bolt pistols, what? martyr sword, relic weapons, frag grenades, crack grenades. You can only have one of any of this model in your army. <laughs> My theory is the Triumph of St. Catherine is potentially... No, I'm taking it back. All right, there is artwork underneath this. And the artwork is of an Adeptus Sororitas where carrying a shield. But... And it's talking about a procession. This is very strange. All right, let's, uh, th I don't know what this is. There's, there's like no reference to it anywhere else. This has got to be no something pictures. new. No pictures. There's no pictures. But it's, okay, let's talk about it. So it's got Acts of Faith, Sacred Rites, and Shield of Faith standard. It has the Presidium Pro um, Protectiva, which looks like a shield as far as I'm concerned. It's a four up and vulnerable save when resolving an attack made against this model, minus one from the hit roll. That sounds like a shield. Sounds like a shield, shield of some kind. Yeah. The Fiery Heart, Morale Tests, taken for Adeptus Sorites when six inches are automatically passed. passed. Solemn Procession, this model cannot embark a border transport. Huh. Relics of the Matriarchs. The model has a number of relics as detailed in the damage table above. Oh my god. What? Okay, so, whoa, it's got 14 attacks. Hold up. What? Let's go what back here. Hold, Hold up. up. All right, the model has a number of relics. Um, each relic gives the model an ability as follows. The model can only have one of each relic. When the model suffers damage that reduces the number of relics, select which of the relics and their abilities the model no longer has. If they regain lost wounds, that increases the number of relics. So basically, the more damage they take, the more relics they lose. 
And then as they regain life, they find the relics they lost. It's also got 18 wounds. Yeah, we're gonna do that in a second. Okay, uh, there are f five relics. Sensor of the Sacred Rose, at the start of each turn, gain a Miracle Dice. That's one of the only ways I've seen to get an extra Miracle Dice. Okay. That's huge. That's, uh, that's, that's a big that's deal. That's huge. Simulacrum of the Ebon Chalice. At the start of your shooting phase, roll a dice for every enemy within six inches. Add one if the, if the model is a Psyker, add one if it is Chaos. On a five up, they take D3 Mortal Wounds. Well, that's not okay. what pleasant. <laughs> Petals of the Bloody Rose. Oh, this is a thing of each order. Um, add one to hit rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by models in friendly Adeptosaurus units within six inches. Icon of the Valorous Heart. Once per phase, perform an act of faith for a friendly unit within six inches that has act of faith ability, even if you have already performed one or more acts of faith in that phase. So you can only perform one act of faith per turn, hit per phase. Mm. Interesting. Didn't say that earlier that I read. Hmm. Oh yeah, like you can perform one act of faith. Uh, you in can each perform phase. one act of faith in each phase. That's okay. Worth knowing. Yes. Alright. Um so you can perform two acts of faith if you have her though. Pretty good. Simulacrum of the Agent Shroud. When you perform an act of faith for a friendly unit while it's within six inches of this model, you can increase or decrease the value one miracle dice used by one before you use it. So maximum six or minimum one. That this is like a miracle dice booster. This is a, actually, I would actually argue it's a huge army synergy booster. Yeah. So we're looking at movement six inches, weapon skill three, ballistic skill three, strength three, toughness three, 18 wounds, 14 attacks, leadership nine, three plus save. Um, it has six bolt pistols. Oh, it's going to fire off six bolt pistols because that's how bolt pistols work. Yeah, because you can, you have, you have to choose either or, but yeah. it's got six. So bolt. it's got six bolt pistols and it's close combat weapon is the Martyr Sword that can only use four of the 14 attacks, which is Strength 6, AP minus 3, 2 damage. Then it has Relic Weapons, which are Strength 5, AP minus 1, 1 damage, and then Frag and Crack Grenades. This, this thing is amazing. That's the craziest unit, but it... There's nothing like this in the game that I've seen before. Because the 18 Wounds, it's like a super big Demon Prince. This is the image. I want to not share the stats, but that is the image that is there. So if you guys can see that... That's what it looks like. That is so, the strangest unit profile I have ever seen in all my years of playing Warhammer. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Six pistols, 18 wounds, but toughness three. Yeah, it's strange. Mm. This is crazy. All right, let's look and see what yeah, this is this... All right. So next we have Junith Aruita. Um, this is that new model that's on the floating thing. Uh, she has two heavy flamers and the Mace of Castigation. That just sounds painful. Um, it's a heavy flamer, eight inch heavy flamer, no, no change there. Um, and then the Mace of Castigation is a, a strength 3 plus 2, so strength 5, AP minus 1, 2 damage. 4 up and vulnerable save, movement of 10 inches, uh, fiery conviction, reroll hit rolls and wound rolls of a 1 for order by martyred lady units. Okay? And she has the pulpit of St. Holine's Basilica. And uh, this, the invulnerable save for Adept Swords Infantry is improved by 1 to a maximum of 4 plus within 6 inches of the model. If you have her and um, Celestine, you're a 4 up and vulnerable save on your sister's battle. That's big. And reroll wound, roll, uh, wound rolls and hit rolls of a one for Order of Martyred Lady. That's pretty strong. Celestine is, of course, orderless. So, yeah, she, she can't benefit from it, which is a shame. That's what I wanted. I uh, wanted her to benefit from it, but she doesn't. But that's okay. It's still pretty good. All right, then we have Missionary. Pretty standard here. Plus one to attack for uh, Adeptus Ministorum units, etc., etc. Um, if the army's battlefield, battleforge, you can have no more than one Missionary. And roll a d6 when a Depths Ministerial model flees. On a 4-up, they do not flee. That's pretty good. Is that's that new. Yeah. That's great. Battle Sisters Squad, everything's about the same here. Um, they've got a Simulacron Imperialis, um, which uh, one sister can have. If, you have. if you have this, you can perform an act of fake this unit if you've already performed one. Oh, that's how we get around it. That's another way to cheat it. Okay. And then we have the Incensus Cherub. Uh, once per battle at the beginning of the phase, uh, you can seed. If so, remove the cherub and gain one miracle die. Roll 2d6 and choose which one you want. Uh, but it can only be used for this unit. That's pretty good. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, depending on the cost of the cherub, it's not bad at all. Then we have a preacher. Um, the preacher is an elite unit. Uh, it's, it's got zealot, same as the missionary, by the way, which is reroll failed hits in close combat um, on the charge, right? It, yeah, it's, it's pretty standard. It's... Uh, while a preacher unit from your army is in six inches of chaos, Subtract one leadership from the enemy units. 
Hmm. For up and run, we'll save and add one to attacks characteristic. Um, what's really annoying is War Hymns doesn't stack because you want to have the Missionary and the Preacher and they will add one, but that doesn't work. Uh, Gemini Superior, we know that they're the bodyguards. Yep. Um, they don't take up a slot if you have Celestine. Uh, they can't get War or Traitor Relics, it's pretty standard. Life Wards, when a, when a friendly Celestine model, there's only one, but friendly Celestine model within three inches would lose any wounds as a result of an attack made against the model they can attempt to intercept. Roll a dice on two up. The model doesn't lose the wound, but this model, uh, this model takes a mortal wound. You can only do one attempt uh, made to intercept each attack. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, at least they said that you can only have one Celestine in your army this time. Do you remember the last time? Uh, an army of Celestines? Yeah. Okay, um, Repentia Superior. This is the, the leader. She's an elite choice. Um, pretty standard four wound model. She has neural whips, uh, which when resolving an attack made of this weapon against a unit, um, in which no model has a leadership characteristic of above seven, add one to the wound roll. Interesting. interesting. Yeah, that's a pretty Very unique weapon. Um, Scourge of the Penitent. Uh, if your army's battleforged, they don't take up a slot if you have Sisters Repentia. Makes sense. Driven onwards, reroll advance rolls and charge rolls for Repentia units in six inches. Reroll wound rolls of one for melee weapons by models in Sisters Repentia units. That's just really good. That that's, is that's a model great. you want to take if you're bringing Sisters yeah. Repentia. So let's look at the Repentia. The Repentia hit on threes, which is great. With Strength three, their, um, their weapon turns into Strength six. Two attacks each. Um, their weapon gives you minus one hits, they hit on fours. At strength six, AP minus three, two damage. But they're zealots, so they reroll all fails. So essentially, they're going to reroll all fails and then reroll wound rolls of a one with a strength six weapon. That's great. Um, when they're destroyed, gain a miracle dice. Great. Um, solace and anguish, if they lose a wound on a five up, they do not lose a wound. That's, I mean, that's just great. Why would you not want that? That's good. A unit comes with four Sisters of Pentia. And we've got the Celestian squad. These are the uh, Celestians, are like the bodyguards, I suppose. Um, a friendly character within three inches lose a wound. Roll a dice on a two up, they don't lose the wound, and this one takes multiple wounds. Same thing that the general yeah, has. Swarm protectors re roll hit rolls for attacks made by models in this unit while they're within six inches of a cannoness. That's not bad. And I mean, she's gonna it want just, to It's just hit rolls in general. You put that next to the cannoness, and these guys are re rolling all hits. Um, what weapons can you give them? Uh, you can give them one can have a special weapon, another one can have a heavy or special weapon. So you got melee options. One can have the, the sister spirit of it. It's basically the same as a battle squad. It seems about the same. They've got the incense as cherub as well. So it's like an elite um, battle yeah. sister squad, basically. Yeah. Two attacks in close combat each. Leadership nine. They're like veterans, basically. Yeah, they seem like But veterans. you can't give them all special weapons. No. Yeah, only one. Well, two, technically. Okay. All right. That answers that. Yeah. The Xerophim squad. <laughs> <laughs> Zeraphim. They have a movement of 12, it's a Z now. Used to be S, right? Seraphim. Is that what they're doing here? Yeah, they're replacing the Z with an S. What? Okay. Wait, is there a difference between Zeraphim and Seraphim? Yeah, they are. Or they're now... Going too fast. Just gonna check out fast attack. Yep, there's Seraphim and Zeraphim. Mm. Okay, the Zeraphim um, can have up to 10 Zeraphim. Um, uh, the Superior can have a Plasma Pistol. And... The Xerophim Superior can have a Xerophim Pennant. Rapturous Blows. When resolving an attack made with a melee weapon, reroll the wound roll. Um, it's Choppy Seraphim. Every model has power swords. Yeah. Okay, it's close combat unit. Okay, so they can reroll wound rolls. Hello, Strength 3 power swords, rerolling wounds. That actually, that makes a huge difference. That matters a lot. Reroll charge rolls for order units within six inches. Oh, just if they have a Xerophim Pennant. Oh, okay. But no, it's every no, no, no. unit. Yeah, every unit just gets to reroll. Sky Strike, they can deep strike. Angelic Visage, uh, the invulnerable save is modeled in this unit. From Shield of Faith is improved by one. Save so a five up invulnerable save. So gotcha. Close combat, five up invulnerable save, zippy, deep strikey, power sword rerolling wound. It's, unit. it's a retooled Seraphim squad with close combat weapons. It's actually pretty good. And it actually seems, yeah, it actually seems really solid. All right. Now with the Dialogus, uh, Loud Hailer, add one to leadership of Adesaurus, Spiritual Fortitude. When this model would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound in the psychic phase, roll a dice on a five up, they do not lose it. So pretty good, not the best, but whatever. When you perform an act of faith for a model or unit within six inches of this model, increase or decrease the value of miracle dice by one before you use it. But it cannot be combined with other abilities that do that. This is pretty good for the miracle dice boosting. Yeah, it makes I it see that. better. I like that actually, I like that a lot. Then we have the Hospitaller. Um, uh, that, this model has four wounds, the Hospitaller has four wounds as well. 
the Medicus Ministorum, at the end of the movement phase, they can provide medical attention to one Adeptus Ministorum infortunate in three inches. Uh, if a unit contains a model that's been lost, that model regains up to D3 lost wounds. Otherwise, if any models have been destroyed, you can return one model to unit with one wound remaining. How many units, though, uh, have more than, I mean, um, not many infantry, certainly. But... Yeah, there's not many units that have multiple wounds that I can see. So far. So far, so far. So far, maybe there's something. Maybe there's something else. I know, like, maybe... Gemini, but Celestine would bring them back. So yeah, do with that. interesting. Um, Arco Flagrants have two wounds. Okay, there you go. There's there you something. Go. All right. Um, then we have an Imagifier. Um, during deployment, after you've set up this model on the battlefield, pick one of the following tales. This model has the ability until the end of the battle. Tale of the Faithful, re-roll and deny the witch tests for, for order units within six inches. Tale of the Stoic, weapons with AP value of minus one are treated as having AP value zero um, against order units within six inches. Yeah. And Tale of the Warrior, add one strength models, uh, strength characteristics of models within six inches. Hello, Imagifier and Power Sword re-rolling strength for Xerophim. Hmm. Or Crusaders, even, which comes next. Uh, it, these guys are about the same. Three up and vulnerable save. Yep. Um, they've got a five up save against mortal wounds in the psychic phase. Other than that, they're power sword dudes. But if. Oh no, they don't boost because they're not order. That's yeah, that's Crusaders things. They're, they're not. Kind of mm. Okay, whichever. Death Cult Assassins, five up and vulnerable save. Uh, they don't take up a slot if you have Minister and Priest. Pretty much the same there. Strength four, AP minus three, power blades, four attacks. Not terrible. Um, Arco Flagellant, uh, I love these guys so much. They're, they're neat. Two wound, two attacks. Um, they have Arco Flails, which do D3 hits. Uh, strength plus one, so it's strength five. Um, when they lose a wound on five up, they don't, so you've got five up, feel no pain. And they don't take up any slots, and they rule all failed hits when they charge. I love these things so much. Yeah. Arco Flagellant. They're pretty cool. rad. Then we have the Dominion Squad. Now, this is something I'm really sad about. I know about this already, and it's really, oh. really sad. What? What happened? Okay, so four Dominions can have a special weapon. Okay. Um, and then uh, they have the Vanguard. At the start of the first battle round, before the first time begins, they can move as if it was your movement phase. They must end more than nine inches away from any models. If you both have players and do this, whoever takes the first time moves eight inches first. It doesn't work in transports anymore. It used to move the transport, and now it doesn't, and that is devastating. I'm really sad about it. I mean, that's a drag, but... It's terrible. You used to have to slap them in... Like a, a rhino, move them up the battlefield, pop open some melter guns or flamers. Mm. They've got the Simulacrum Imperialis. Uh, once per phase, you can form an active faith unit, even if you already perform one, and the Incensor Sheriff as well. This is so sad. I'm so sad about this. This needs FAQing. GW, please listen to me. We need it. Then we have the Seraphim, which we all know. Um, two of them can have two bolt pistols. Instead of two bolt pistols, you have two hand flamers or two inferno pistols. Um, this is all about the same. Angelic Visage, they have the five up and vulnerable save, and Sky Strike. The, you have the Seraphim and the Xeraphim. The Xeraphim are amazing. I really like those. Those seem really cool. Then we have the Exorcist. This is all about the same here. No, it is not. Oh, no. It has an Exorcist missile launcher. Well, no way. Wait, what? Yep. I need it. <sighs> okay. What? The Exorcist has changed. <sighs> need a moment. This is amazing. I almost can't believe what I'm seeing here. Ooh. Yeah, it can be equipped with Exorcist Conflagration Rockets instead of the Exorcist Missile Launcher. Okay. The Exorcist Missile Launcher is no longer 1d6 shots. This is it is weird. 3d3 Strength 8 AP-3 shots that do d6 damage. I'm going to say that again. 3d3 Strength 8 AP-3 d6 damage, but you can also have Conflagration Rockets, which are 3d6 Strength 5 AP-2 weapons. Wow. Well, okay, so you have something that's going to mulch infantry blobs and something that's going to jack wow. up a tank. Wow! That will smoke a Russ, for sure. The missile launcher part will absolutely uh, jack up a Russ. Wow! And it's got a ballista skill of 3-up, so... This is amazing. And it has a heavy bolter. Just because. because why not? Why Throw not? a heavy bolter on there, go for it. Then there's a mortar fire. You ever heard of one of these? Is that the forge war? I have no idea. No, it won't be. No. The thing. Okay, you can have one mortifier, or you can have up to five mortifiers. And it can have an anchorite instead of a mortifier. Okay. Every mortifier has two heavy bolters and two penitent flails. What? This kind of reminds me of a penitent engine. The way the stats are. Movement nine, strength five, toughness five, eight, four attacks, wounds five. I bet this is an alternate penitent engine. 
You know what? No, I think I remember reading on this. I think that is. I think okay. that is exactly what that is. So two heavy bolts and two penitent flails. It's ballistic skill three plus, which is great. So the heavy bolt was going to be amazing. The penitent flails, uh, you make three hit rolls for each attack instead of one. <laughs> so that's four times three, which is 12. Yeah. Um, if the bear is equipped with two of this weapon, which it is, it makes one additional attack. So it's 13 attacks. 13 attacks, weapon skill three, strength six, because it gives it plus one to hit, and AD minus two. That's really good. When a model from this unit is destroyed, roll a dice on a four up, it ekes out final vengeance doing D3 mortal wounds within one inch. That's great to take out the enemy and not, you want to charge into combat and let it do that. Yeah. Um, when it would lose a wound on a six up, it does not. And blaze of agony. If you choose this unit to shoot in your shooting phase, choose for the heavy bolters to have an assault three characteristic instead of heavy. Or for heavy flamers, it can have pistol D6 until the end of the phase. What? So yeah, you can give this thing two heavy flamers instead of the two heavy bolters, or one heavy flamer and one heavy bolter. So you could give it two d6 pistol shots, flame heavy flamer pistol shots. That's really good. You can also give it a buzz blade instead of the two penitent flails, flails or one of each. The buzz blade is plus three strength, putting it strength eight, AP minus three, two damage, um, and it makes one additional attack with this profile. So it's five attacks of strength eight. So if you need to go something after something a bit bigger. bigger. But you can take five of them in the squad. This thing's amazing. It's only three power levels, so I suspect it's cheap points cost as well, but we'll check it out in a minute. Retribute squad. Um, this is the heavy weapon squad. Uh, basically, four of them can have heavy weapons. They've got the Simulacrum Imperialis again, so you can use Act of Faith on this unit no matter what. Yeah. So there's ways to get around the Miracle Dice thing. Faithful Advance. Do not get the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. Space Marines, where you at? Yeah, uh, what, what, yeah what, what's going on? Right, rights of Fire. Add four inches to the range characteristics of heavy weapons in this unit. What? Hello, 12 inch heavy flamers. What is going on here? Inside a, um, a rhino or the this battle one. Yeah, yeah this is amazing. Um, armor and cherub. Um, after you fire a ranged weapon, it can reload the weapon. If it does, it's removed from play and one model can fire again. It's cool. Penitent engines. These are pretty much the same that we know. Weapon skill four plus, ballistic skill five plus. That other, weapon, that other thing is just so much better. Yeah. Um, the penitent buzz blade. Um, strength plus three, AP minus three, two damage, same thing, penitent flail. So this is just the downgraded version of the other thing. Well, does the other one come with a five up feel no pain? Uh, this one has a five up feel no pain, the other one has a six up feel no pain. So I guess the penitent's a bit more durable. And the penitent's got zealot. Okay, so yeah. But it hits on four with rerolls, the other one hits on a three. And you can take five of the other ones, it looks like you're maxed In out a unit. three dudes. Yeah, yeah, so wow. Interesting. Sorotus Rhino, we know about uh, the Immolator, uh, we also know about. Uh, there's nothing changed in the Rhino. We can have 10, yep, same. Um, the Immolator's pretty much the same, no change there. It's got 12 inch Immolation Flamers, Assault 2d6, automatically hit. Then we have a Battle Sanctum, which is a new fortification, which I suspect we're going to be seeing. Yes. Adeptus Ministerum Structure. Wait, is the Battle Sanctum, does it already exist? Is it like a terrain feature? So there's. From Kill Team? The, not from Kill Team, there's the Fortress of Arrogance. Which I would have thought they would have made a sister's thing, but it's not. So no, nothing, no, no battle sanctum right. has ever been. So let's talk about the battle sanctum. Um, it's three power level. Don't the points are yet. We we'll get to that after it's set up. It's treated as an adeptus ministerum structure. Uh, terrain feature cannot move. Uh, only infantry units, beast units, swarm units can fly. Can be set up or end their move on the upper floors of it. Infantry are assumed to be able to scale walls and travel through windows, doors, and portals readily. Um, you can move through the floors. Oh. Infantry units that are on or within the structure get the benefit of cover. Um, other units that are entirely on or within the structure only receive benefit of 50% covered. Blessings of the Saint. At the start of each battle round, if there are any Adeptus Ministerum units, you gain one mil uh, on it. Uh, within six inches of it, you gain one Miracle Dice. Consecrated Ground. Add one to the leadership characteristic of models in the Adeptus Ministerum units within six inches of it. Subtract one from leaderships in Chaos units within six inches of it. It's a church. It's a church. A church that gives you... America dies. And if yeah, you have a priest in it. Battle church. And there we go, that's it. Then we get into, uh, or that's it for the, the, the core part. Then we start getting into the weapons and uh, the stratagems. Okay, so here we are. And we've got the order convictions. So um, we've got the troops rule, obviously. Uh, the pious and the penitent. The listed units below can be included without killing you because of the keyword, basically, which is Celestine, Gemini, Superior, Hospital, what you'd expect, basically, yeah. everything. Um, Okay, if you're in match play, a detachment that does not include a minister on priest can only include one Ecclesiarchy Battle Conclave unit. 
Right. So you basically have to have a priest if you want all the, the non-adeptus orders and stuff. Yeah. Then we've got order convictions. We've got the, our martyred lady, the blood of martyrs. Get one miracle die at the end of any phase, um, except the morale phase, in which any units of this conviction were destroyed. In addition to the miracle dice gained for uh, characters that die. In addition, when you resolve an attack made by a model with this conviction, add one to the hit roll if one or more models from the model's unit have been destroyed in this battle. What? Even if they came back to life afterwards. That's... It's pretty good. Plus one to hit in close combat. Zeraphim, where you at? Two up Zeraphim. Yeah. Pretty uh, good. That's pretty good. Then the Valorous, the Valorous Heart. When a model with this conviction would lose a wound on a six up, it's not. Uh, plus, when resolving an attack, maybe with a weapon of AP minus one against this uh, weapon, it goes back to AP minus zero. Um, and also, if they're under the con the conviction, if the unit with this conviction is under the effect of the Imagifier's Tale of Stoic, then weapons with AP minus two are treated as having AP minus one. All right, so this just reduces AP. It, it's on power armor units. That's pretty good. That's actually pretty nice. Power armor units in cover, AP minus one and AP minus two are nullified. That's actually kind of that's good. pretty good. Especially if you have that backline yeah. unit that wants to sit. Primaris bolt rifles in the tactical phase. Sorry, just not happening. Uh, okay, then bloody rose. Uh, when resolving an attack with melee weapon or pistol, uh, improve the AP by one. Hand flamers. Hello. Oh yeah, that's huge. Um, Plus, add one to the attack's characteristic in any turn in which they charge. That'd be great for Xerophim, like Xerophim, and I think Seraphim can actually take... So that's AP minus four power weapons. Xerophim can't have hand flamers. Not Xerophim, Seraphim. Seraphim can, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You so can you do have the Seraphim and the... Yeah, and those. That's pretty good. <laughs> Even Chalice, when they would lose a wound on a... Uh, because of a mortal wound on a five-up, they don't. In addition, when you perform an act of faith, um, you can discard one miracle dice if you do. Oh, just the act of faith is six. six. Just auto six. Yeah, that's nice. So how would you like every act of faith to be a six? Yeah, just the exorcist. Always just yeah. six. That's a six. It's three d six though, so you'd have to have just a six. You'll probably roll a one or two in there, so just swap it out for a six, and it becomes value three. Did they specify what happens if you have a three d three but use a six instead of a d three? It says replace the dice. That's got to get a thank you. Yeah, gonna, I imagine they're going to say it means it counts as three, yeah. but it does <laughs> beg the question. Technically, oh. um, Argent Shroud, when a unit with this conviction advances, it can fire ranged weapons as if it had moved without advancing. Okay. And then Sacred Rose, when a morale test is taken, no more than one model can flee. And after you perform an act of faith, roll a dice on five up, you gain a miracle dice. Wow. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Actually, In that... addition, Overwatch is on five and six. That's pretty it's good. Great. The, the triple? I mean, I kind of like the one that lets you advance and kind of not moving. That's kind of awesome. It's pretty good. There's a lot of good stuff here. This is These are good. Those are really good traits. Um, and now we have stratagems. One, two, three, four. Four pages of stratagems. Solid. Let's do this. One command point. Open the reliquaries. Use it before the battle. Your army can have one extra relic of the ecclesiarchy. Okay. One command point, embodied prophecy. At the start of the fight phase, pick a Xerophim squad until the end of the phase when resolving an attack with a melee weapon, reroll wound rolls of one. Those power swords. Um, one command point, furious recital. Um, when an Exodus model of your army is chosen to shoot, subtract one from the leadership of enemy models within 12 inches of the Exorcist. Subtract two from Chaos models. I was waiting for that to say max the dice. I was yeah, I was, I was waiting for that. Throw the book in the air. I was like, oh. One command point, Blazing Piety. Use it to start the psychic phase. Pick an enemy chaos unit within six inches of a dialogist model. They take one mortal wound. If they're a demon, they take D3 mortal wounds. I don't think I'll ever use that ability ever. Uh, one command yeah. point, Battle Rites. At the start of the battle, if your warlord has sacred rights abilities on the battlefield, select one active sacred right. Roll a dice to randomly generate a new sacred right. You may re-roll the result if it's the same as one you already have. The selected sacred right is no longer active and the new one is now active. Okay, so you can switch your sacred right during the game. That's not bad, Interesting, actually. That's... But you get a random. It's random. Oh, eh. One command point, moment of grace. Use it after making a hit roll or wound roll um, for Adept Sorceress model in your army or after making a saving throw. Discard one to three miracle dice. Add one to the result of the roll for each miracle dice you discarded. You get a hit roll or wound roll for an attack made by a model. You can discard one to three dice and add one to the result of the roll. Okay. After. This allows you to retroactively use multiple miracle dice to affect a roll. Okay. So you're like, this is really important, roll it, oop, it's a one. I should have used one of my miracle dice that are two. And you don't want to use a CP re-roll. Right. You need, and you, you're like, I need exactly this number. Yeah. And then you can... Yeah, because you got a bunch of twos. All right, I see it. Burn bad miracle dice. 
Fair enough, because you, you do roll One game. command point, final redemption. Use it when a sister's repenter unit is the target of an attack with a melee weapon. Until the end of the phase, roll a dice whenever a model is destroyed on a four up, uh, the enemy unit takes a mortal wound. That's just good. Yes, it's just, it's nice. just good. It's just cool. Martyr's immolation. When an immolated model is destroyed, do not roll a dice, it automatically explodes. Great. Holy Trinity. Use the strategy in the shooting phase after you've declared how you'll split the shots of an Adeptosaurus. If you shoot all your weapons at the same target, you're within range of at least one bolt weapon, one flame weapon, and one melter weapon, plus one to the wound roll. We had that one before, it's great. Yep. Heroin in the making. Use the strategy before the battle, picking after picking your warlord. Pick an Adeptosaurus character model from your army, except for a warlord or a named character. Generate one warlord trait. They're regarded as your warlord for the purpose of the warlord trait. Each warlord trait in your army must be unique. So basically just... Give it an extra warlord trait. trait. That's actually really nice. That's the actually really divine good. Divine Intervention. Use it when an Adeptosaurus character model, except for a main character, is destroyed. Um, before any miracle dice are generated, discard one to three miracle dice. At the end of the phase, return the model to play with the number of wounds remaining. Equal to the number of miracle dice you discarded. Bring it as close as possible to its previous position and one inch away from the enemy. You do not gain a miracle dice for the destruction. It's pretty cool if you want to keep your Adeptosaurus character alive. Holy Rage. In the charge phase... You can charge even if you advanced. It's great. Two command points, Faith and Fury. Um, after you perform an act of Faith for a hit roll, reuse the same Miracle Dice for the wound roll as well. That's great. That's good. Two command points, my six is hit and wound. Pretty good. That's nice. Yep. It's only from one character though. No. Oh. Well, maybe not so good. Yeah. If it was on that big vehicle that's not a penitent engine. Yeah, that would be something. Um, Martyr. Uh, use it at the end of any phase when your Warlord is destroyed. If it was an Adept Source's character, um, if your warlord is Celestine, perform any rolls of the model's miraculous intervention ability before using it. Okay, you may not use it if your warlord returns to the battlefield during miraculous intervention or divine intervention. Gain D three command points. Yeah. So basically, your character's dead. Spend a command point. Gain D three. It's pretty good. You just do that all the time. Yeah. There, if if the situation comes up, you just do it. There's no yeah. reason not to. Yep. Yeah, it's great. Uh, we saw that in the chaos book as well. Yep. Um, Venerated Saint, one command point. Use it during deployment after you've set up an Imagifier. Select two different tails instead of one. Okay, this next one, Suffer Not the Witch. One command point. Use it in the shooting or fight phase. Pick an Adeptosaurus unit until the end of the phase. When you're shooting a Psyker, reroll the wound roll. Okay. So that's when it needs to happen. And now, whew, we have a bunch here. All right. Um, Storm of Retribution. Use it whenever Retribute Squad uh, fires Overwatch or is chosen to shoot. Either until the end of the phase when resolving an attack with a heavy bolter, add one to hit, or when resolving an attack with a heavy flame of reroll the wounds, or add 12 inches to the range of multi melters, and when resolving an attack, add one to the damage. That's just honestly good. You kind of want a squad of retributors just to do that now. Yeah. Um, one command point for last rites. Use it at the start of the morale phase. Pick a Spitzler from your army until the end of that phase when a morale test is taken within six inches. Do not add the number of models from that unit that have been destroyed that turn. It's great, just roll dice. Yeah. That's, you're probably going to pass. Uh, one command point, Devastating Refrain. Use it when an Exorcist model fires Overwatch until the end of the phase. Reroll any or all of the dice to determine the type characteristic of an Exorcist hey. launcher. Well, okay, so this also answers we did, the question, question previously. Yeah, yeah so good. it is, you, that's... That's pretty good. That's good. All right, so basically, yeah, you, you spend a command point and during re-roll. Overwatch or chosen to shoot. Yeah. So it's uh, to, to see how many shots you have. 3d3, that's great. And you can re-roll any, any and or all. all the dice. Yeah, so if, I've got two threes and a one, I'm going to re-roll one. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. One command point, Deadly Descent. Use it after a Seraphim squad is set up on the battlefield until the end of the phase at six inches to the range of pistol weapons. They can shoot as if it's a shooting phase. We knew that one from before. That lets you land with hand flamers or... Uh, Inferno Pistols. Yeah. One command point for the Vessel of the Emperor's Will. Use it after you perform an act of faith for a character. Gain one Miracle Dice. That's nice. Yep. Basically, you get your trader command point for a Miracle Dice. One command point, Test of Faith. Use it at the end of a phase where you gain a Miracle Dice due to Purity or Valor. Gain D3 Miracle Dice in addition to the one you've wow, won. Wow, that's, that's what awesome. you want. Yeah, that's what you want. Exceptional Proficiency. Use it when a Celestian squad fires Overwatch or is chosen to shoot or fight with. Until the end of the phase when resolving an attack with a model in that unit, reroll the hit and reroll the wound. For Celestians, it's the bodyguards. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, Blessed Bolts. Use it when Adeptosaurus fires Overwatch or is chosen to shoot. Storm Bolters have AP minus 2 and 2 damage. That's great. Yeah. Purity of Faith. Uh, when an enemy Psyker tries to cast a spell within 24 inches, one command point on a 4-up, it's negated. 
Two command points for judgment of the faithful. When a, a depth sorceress unit falls back, they can still shoot and charge. Not bad for your Xerophim. Yeah. Um, not that you'd ever do that. Uh, extremist trigger word, I love this one. Two command points in the five phase, Arco Flagellants. You do not have D3 attacks, you have three attacks. Roll one dice for each model on a six, they're destroyed. Love that, that's great. I love that for my Arco Flagellants. That's really good. Three command points, Desperate for Redemption. Use it at the end of the fight phase. Pick a Penitent Engine, Mortifier, or Sisters Repentia. Um, they can fight as if it was the fight phase. Fight again. Three yep. CP, a lot of codexes right. have it. It's good. Uh, Honor the Martyrs. Order of Martyred Lady character is destroyed as the result of an attack by an enemy unit. Um, until the end of the battle, Rem resolving an attack made by a model in an Order of Martyred Lady unit, reroll hit was a one. That's great. So if they get rid of your cannonist, your whole army for a command point has the ability of it. That's really good. Blind Faith. At the start of the shooting phase, pick Order of Valorous Heart unit. Until the end of the phase, Rem resolving an attack, they ignore hit modifiers. It's okay. Tear them down one command point, Order of the Bloody Rose, when they're chosen to fight until the end of the phase. An attack with melee weapons, add one to the wound roll. That's actually of Bloody Rose. very strong, yes. Yep. Uh, two command points, Cleansing Flames. Order the Ebon Chalice, fires over your shoots until the end of the phase. Don't roll to determine the type characteristics of flame weapons. They have their maximum values. So flame weapons are just sixes. Pretty good. Faith is our shield. Uh, use it in the Psychic phase for an Order of the Argent Shroud. Uh, when a model would lose a mortal wound roll dice on a five up, they do not use it. Uh, that's for one unit. Yeah. And then Emperor's Judgment for the Order of the Sacred Rose. When they fire a watch or shoot, resolving an attack with a bolt weapon, an unmodified hit roll of a six cause an additional hit. So Order of the Sacred Rose, bolt weapons, and the Blessed Bolts, that's a great little combo. That's really good. All right, and then we get on to Warlord Traits for each of the orders and everything, and then we've got the uh, special items. So Ooh. Warlord Traits. Um, we have Inspiring Orator. Add one to the Warlord's Leadership Characteristic. Friendly units can use their leadership within six inches. Meh. Okay. Making a charge roll, you can. Uh, this is Righteous Rage. Reroll any or all the dice, resolving an attack made with a melee weapon. Um, you can reroll the wound roll. Okay. It's nice. Reroll yeah, charges, nice. reroll wounds. Okay. Uh, execution of Heretics, subtract one for leadership of enemy units within six inches. Mm. Beacon of Faith, this is Celestines. At the start of your turn, if on the battlefield, gain a miracle dice. We expected That's that. That's nice. That's good. In, uh, indomitable Belief. Uh, the invulnerable save of infantry models from Shield of Faith improves by one. Pretty good. Hey. Um, and then Pure of Will, the Triumph of St. Catherine has this. They can attempt to deny one additional psychic power uh, with the Shield of Faith. Uh, Shield of Faith and subtract one from psychic test take of any of models. That's pretty big because you're rolling a single dice, so that does make a difference. Then we've got the, the order traits. The Martyred Lady, add one to wound characteristics, and the save characteristic goes up to a maximum of uh, two plus. So add one to that too. Order of Valerius Heart, 5 up Phil no Pain. Uh, Order of the Bloody Rose, add 1 to the attacks characteristic, they can charge and advance. Order of Evan Chalice, if on the battlefield, the miracle dice you gain at the start of the first battle round is a 6. At the start of the first battle round, if your army's battleforged, gain D3 command points. That's, that's pretty strong. That's pretty good, yeah. Order of the Argent Shroud, the Wall of Conform Hurricane Intervention of 6 inches. Um, so, yeah, same as, that's a pretty standard one. Uh, they always fight first in the fight phase. So that's combo there. And then Order of the Sacred Rose, when you form an act of faith, gain one miracle dice. So when the Warlord uses an act of faith, gain one miracle dice. So your Warlord doesn't burn miracle dice when they use acts of faith. Oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Yep. And then we have Relics, and we have two pages of Relics. So there's a lot in this book. Yeah, this is a... Blade of Admonition, uh, it's a blessed blade only. Strength plus two, AP minus three, three damage. Brazier of Holy Flame. Uh, for a model with a brazier of holy fire only, this is the cannon. Yep. It replaces it when a psychic test is taken by any models within 18 inches, subtract two from the result. It's a better null rod, basically. But you also still have the brazier of holy fire. Yeah. That's interesting. It's actually kind of nice. I like that. Nice. Wrath of the Emperor uh, replaces a bolt pistol. It's a pistol four, strength five, AP minus two, two damage. Nice. Great. Litanies of Faith. Once per turn, if you have this relic, you uh, on the battlefield, you once per turn, you gain a miracle dice. And you can reroll the dice. Wow. Okay. That's brilliant. You, you just take that. Yeah. Mantle of Ophelia, canonist only, three up and vulnerable save. Okay. Uh, model with this relic would lose a wound, roll a dice on a five up, they don't lose a wound. Five up, they don't Casket of Penance, this is for Valorous Heart only. Minus one from the toughness characteristics of enemy models within one inch of it. Uh, yeah, within in close combat, basically. Book of St. Lucius, at three inches to the range of war abilities. Um, Iron Surplus of St. Estalia, a model of this relic has a save characteristic of two plus. In addition, when resolving an attack, unmodified wound rolls one, two, three automatically fail. Pretty good. Martyr's Vengeance, Order of Our Martyred Lady with Inferno Pistol. It becomes a Strength 9 Inferno Pistol. 
and roll two dice when doing damage, discard one of the results, irregardless of the range. Nice. Annunciation of the Creed, Order of the Even Chalice. It's a Condemn the Bolt Gun. It becomes a Strength 5 AP minus 2 D3 Condemn the Bolt Gun that can target characters. Yeah. And against Psychers, the damage is flat 3. Quicksilver Veil, Argent Shroud only. When resolving attack against the model with this relic, subtract 1 from the hit roll. Okay. Order of the Bloody Rose with a Chainsword. You get a plus 1 Strength pl Chainsword AP minus 2 2 damage, and it gets 3 extra attacks. That's actually good because um, of that other thing you can only take if you have a chainsaw yeah. and canvas, that's great. And then lastly, the Light of Saint Agnetha. Order of the Sacred Rose model with a Brazier of Holy Fire only. Replaces the Holy Fire. Subtract one from the leadership of enemy demons within six inches. In addition, when they fire Overwatch or chosen to shoot, you can unleash the light, similar thing to the Brazier before. Um, roll a dice on a two up, the enemy takes D3 mortal wounds. If it's a demon, it's D6. And when you unleash the Holy Fire, you can discard a Miracle Dice. If you do not, they cannot unleash the light again. Oh, it dis basically discard Miracle Dice and do the six mortal wounds over and over again against demons within 12 inches. I in mean, it, it will arbitrarily hose demons. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, if you like the Order of the Sacred Rose and you hate demons, that's what you take. Yep. And that's about it. The last thing that I just want to talk about is the points cost of this new thing, the Mortifier. Uh, the Mortifier is 36 points or 42 if it's an Anchorite. But that's without War Gear. That's without War Gear, yeah. So. So the word here might make it a little more expensive. A pair of heavy bolters, probably not too expensive. 10 points each on the heavy bolters. And then it's got that other weapon, that close combat weapon. The, flailing the penitent flail, there it is. Zero. Zero, okay, so, ooh, that's dirt cheap. Oh yeah, zero, 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 zero. All the close combat weapons are zero in melee weapons. Yeah, that's except for uh, like, blessed blades so, and so, so the mortifier is 36 plus 20? Yeah. That's, that's great, 56 points. That's really good. Oh, well, hello, nurse. And there you have it, Sisters of Battle. They're amazing. I'm getting it. Are you getting it? Thank you ever so much for watching. As always, please make sure you click subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss out on the other videos. And we will see you next time. Oh, yeah.